What's happening? Thanks for tuning in to this YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and try to bring you something every single week. Talking about college football, a lens from the West Coast. I'm Yogi Roth. And I think when we look at week four, that was in week five, which we're walking into, number one, it's like, how fast is this thing going? This is the sixth game for our crew because we had a week zero game with USC San Jose State. So it feels like the season's almost halfway done, which is not a great feeling, but the drama continues to ramp up, the expectations, the hype, and of course, the dialogue. I don't know about you, but I've noticed, God, it feels like some. People got a lot to say these days in college football. It seems like everybody's kind of angry, and, and I get it. And to me, I I go back to rivalries are great. The pageantry is great. But there's a shift underlying going on in college football. And I think we're seeing a lot of vitriol come to the surface. Just a reminder to all of us who love this game, before we hit send on our social media, to, let's all take a breath, especially if it's directed at a player. Uh, none of them deserve that because the games and the stakes are only going to grow from here. So let's talk about the stakes right now. The Pac-12 is is rolling. Last week, you had eight teams ranked. This week, you have six, all of them in the top 20. You got four in the top 10. And I think a couple of those in the top 10 are being undervalued with their position in the AP poll. One, of course, being Washington at number seven. Now, granted, don't put a ton of stock in the AP poll, but that's set a narrative. And I think the strength of this league this year is different than it's been in every other year. So I'll be curious to see if those voters change their narrative, their dialogue over the course of the next couple of weeks as the games continue to grow. We have a top 10 matchup possibly in two weeks with Washington. Or yeah, two and three weeks, two and a half weeks with Washington and Oregon. And then the games just continue to grow from there. But let's get to the games that we have this weekend. Now, I'm really excited. I get to go to Tucson. And it's going to be a sellout. I call it a red out. It's going to be off the hook. And it's Jed Fish's team hosts Washington. I called their game a year ago in Seattle. It was an absolute shootout. It's a one-score game until very late in the game. UW scores to kind of pull away. But it was back and forth. What's it going to be like Saturday night in Tucson? I'm not really sure. But I do know the playmakers are ridiculous. Ted Terrell McMillan, Jacob Cowing, Tanner McLaughlin. We're talking about some of Arizona's weapons. On the other side, you've got Jalen McMillan, Roma Dunze, Jalen Polk, and many others led, of course, by Michael Penix Jr. The question all week will be who's playing quarterback for Arizona, Jaden Delora, no Fafita. Jaden Delora has been battle-tested, 32 starts in his career. No Fafita, this would be his first start in his career. I don't think the offense changes regarding either one of them playing, but the stage changes from last week at Stanford to hosting one of the top teams in America. I think one little footnote for Arizona, I called the stretch of their games last year when it was in no particular order, Oregon, USC, uh, Utah, and and uh, UW. And Utah was the last one before they went and beat UCLA. It's just a stretch. And they've got a stretch coming here. I think that experience is going to serve this team really well. How they handle the big play explosive ability of UW, we'll find out. This defense has, has been a Pretty much a dramatic flip in year two under Johnny Nansen for Arizona. What does it look like on Saturday night? I cannot wait. I cannot wait to find out. A couple of the games that I think are notable, of course, uh, this week is the Friday night game. It's probably the game of the week out, out west, or at least Friday night with Utah and Oregon State. Top 20 teams. You've got this Oregon State run game. And I went back and watched a Washington State film this morning. Their offensive front is moving lines of scrimmage. The challenge is the consistency of when it's a third and long, can you convert? Third and short, can you convert? There was a couple miscues that I think cost them that game that were forced by Washington State, another top 20 team. And the story of Washington State is off the charts. I'll get to that in a second because I'm going to call their game in two weeks. Uh, but just to finish up the Utah game, it's the best defense in the country. Through four weeks, it's the best defense in the country. You can't tell me otherwise. Just, just look at what they've done, how they've suffocated everyone they've played. And they've elevated because their catalyst, their leader, their QB1, Cam Rising, has not played a snap yet. Does he play Friday night? I think we'll find out once everybody gets to Corvallis. Hopefully he gets cleared. I know he's been practicing. So hopefully that happens for Kai Whittingham's squad and they get them at their best. This game is awesome, though. I called it two years ago where Oregon State upset. Utah, the fans rushed the field. Jack Coletto came on the post-game show. Uh, there was a punt block from Luke Musgrave with his left hand, and it was, it was off the charts. So expect, I think, another classic game. It goes late into the night on Friday night. I think the winning team completes 
one to three balls in the second half that are must-haves. Whether it's Nate Johnson or Cam Rising, TBD, DJU, he'll have his opportunities. That will be the difference in this game in my eyes. Saturday morning, USC, how about that? Big noon kickoff. Granted, it's 10 o'clock mountain time in Boulder, but they go to face Colorado. And obviously Colorado's coming off um, a performance where, where they were dominated by Oregon. In pretty much every facet, Coach Prime called it a classic uh, butt kick, and I think after the game, and, and I would agree with that. How do they bounce back? How do they bounce back? Do they have the horses to bounce back? I think they've got the mentality to bounce back. Uh, I don't know if USC's run game is what Oregon's is from an offensive lineman standpoint, but they ran the ball pretty good against Arizona State. Marshawn Lloyd is that guy at the running back position. I know we're going to talk a lot about Shador Sanders and uh, Caleb Williams all weekend and all week in advance to Saturday, and that's fair. But I think this is a game, if I was calling it, my eyes would be completely in the trenches on the O-line and D-line in this game. The other thing will be the tempo of Colorado. Do they maintain going as fast as possible, knowing what USC is on offense? That'll be some things to kind of look forward to in this game come Saturday. Uh, Oregon, they go to Stanford. They got to bring their own juice. Stanford, I got to commend their effort over the weekend against Arizona. The effort they played with in all phases was so impressive. Look, it's not going to happen overnight for Troy Taylor. They can't go get 70 new players. Just, it's just not how it works there. But they can recruit well, high-achieving student-athletes who aren't going to leave or want to transfer until they get their degree. And I think that is kind of their superpower moving forward. So keep an eye on Troy Taylor. Uh, it'll be a challenge for them this weekend, but I like what they're building on the farm. And for the Ducks, they got to win this one, and then they get a bye, get really healthy, and then they go to Seattle to face UW. So that, that'll that be pretty electric. Arizona State and Cal, neither one of them have put together complete performances yet this season. Can one of them do that? I think if they do, then you got the winner on Saturday. Looking forward to watching that one. Massive respect for both of those staffs and those programs. Justin Wilcox has been there for a while. Of course, Kenny Dillingham in year number one. I think just to kind of finish off on two teams that have buys this week in UCLA and Oregon State, we will be calling that game at the Rose Bowl at noon next Saturday. And I think we just got to give Washington State their credit. Cameron Ward is a Heisman candidate, period, end of story. Two games over 400 yards. He's been a catalyst to this offense. He has dealt all over the field. I love him at the line of scrimmage, looking at the sideline, getting plays, changing plays at the line of scrimmage, utilizing his legs in the run game, taking shots on the sideline, bouncing back up. But year two for him in another system, I think you're just seeing his game even mechanically go to another level under Ben Arbuckle. So massive props to them. And then defensively, they fly around. They fly around. Brennan Jackson, Ron Stone Jr., they are the two true catalyst leaders, game-changing players in that front, but it's contagious. Go watch that film. And look, they got creased a couple times in that game by Oregon State, but they bounce back and make a play. This secondary is physical. Shaw Smith Wade might be the best corner on the West Coast. So I can't wait to watch them in person. It's been two years since Ted Robinson and our crew and myself have called a coup game. Granted, it's not in Pullman. Hopefully we get there at some point this season, but we cannot wait to get to the Rose Bowl to face a UCLA team that might be the best defensive team Chip Kelly's had. And I think he's got the best weapons he's had offensively, especially down the field, Jay Michael Sturdivant leading the way with Dante Moore. And Dante Moore is going to have two weeks to digest that challenging game in Salt Lake City against Utah. So a lot to be excited about. Big picture, the West Coast football and college football in the pack is thriving. Look at all the teams ranked. The respect is there, but I still believe that those teams in the top 10 should be higher than where they are. Ultimately, their performance will net out if they earn that from the AP. And really what matters most is when we get into the CFP rankings in late November. And the good thing for this league about all four of those teams in the top 10 right now is they play each other. You can't say the same about any other league in America with the top teams making sure they face off once against one another. All right, so there it is. Hope you enjoyed. Hope uh, you leave a review, a comment. Let me know what you want to talk about. Hope you're enjoying these things we're trying to do every week. Peace.